Hello everyone and welcome back to the Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with another Total War Warhammer video. Today we'll be continuing our mod highlight series. And once again, we're taking a look at OVN Loss Factions. Today's faction is the Citadel of Dusk, a high elf faction which works rather differently to all others. Rather than just making your way to secure Ulf 1, here you are tasked to protect the seas. With this faction, you take the role more of a defender than the attacker, as you begin in an extremely strategic point for the high elf navy. Now, this faction doesn't add a lot of new changes to the High Elves, which in truth I myself prefer. The High Elves are in a very good place right now, so they don't really need that much added. But this will give you a different sense of playstyle with a different focus. But without wasting any more time, let's just jump right in. Your campaign begins in the eastern reaches of Lustria. And before you say anything, yes, I know Lustria itself is quite overcrowded, but it does make sense to have this faction start here rather than close to Orthwan, but still feel like it is defending the coastal regions of the High Elf Island Nation. Now, as you're aware, you are surrounded by two potential enemies straight from the start, the Skaven of Clan Pestilence and Lokir Felhart, both of which are in the same starting province as you are. You have to love Lustria for what it is, overcrowded as hell. You have potential allies with Teclis being so close, and generally the Lizardmen will look at you more favourably if you fight against Skrulk and Lokir. This faction has two campaign faction effects, the first one being of booty and cargo, which are as follows. Receives penalties when Etain and the eastern shores of Lustria are not held by High Elves. Gains bonuses when Etain and the eastern shores of Lustria are held by High Elves. All High Elf Legendary Lords leave temporary bonuses on regions they visit belonging to the Citadel of Dusk. And finally, campaign movement range plus 10% for all armies. And the second faction effect is Naval Supply Line, which is a rather interesting effect, as the effects provided will change as you start moving around and capturing the shoreline and making sure that you control all the territories you need. This is obviously Alariel's own mechanic, which has changed around a little bit. But as you can see, at the start of your campaign you have the following effects. Minus 3 public order for all provinces, high threat level and low supplies, this means that you may have invasions coming against you, cafe silk resource production, free sacks per region, this is a new trade resource which we'll cover later on in the video, diplomatic relations minus 5 with high elves, upkeep plus 16% for all units and all armies, income from trade at minus 55%, and recruitment costs for all units and all armies plus 16%. Yes, there are a lot of negatives here, but if anything that should give you more incentive to capture the coastal regions of Lustria, the eastern side of course, as fast as you humanly can, as you would want to negate these effects. As you can see, it says naval supply line stability at 31% when you start your campaign, and as you control more and more territories needed to stabilize this, you'll get much more bonuses which will become rather lucrative. Now just to highlight what exactly are the eastern coastal regions, they are from where you begin in your Immortal Empires campaign, making your way all the way up north until the end of the Bend of Lustria. By the time you make your way up there, depending on your difficulty and your playstyle, that should be under control of either the Golden Magus or Lufa Harkin. Your legendary lord and the only uniquely added character for this faction is Alfran's Stormrider. A melee base lord who can dish out a decent amount of damage, and once he has access to a certain amount of levels, he can also gain access to a few different types of spells. However, bear in mind that he is not the best spellcaster around. If anything, use this more as a helpful bonus. His special items focus around making him more potent on the battlefield, even giving him increased physical resistance. 
and his campaign effects focuses around the buffing up of High Elf Nobles, your hero characters which will allow you to recruit more and make them more efficient if they are within your same province. Now, I did mention that there was a fret level, and how that translates is as follows. Every now and then, during the start of one of your newest turns, if you have a high fret level, an invasion can be spotted. This generally spawns an army of enemies within the regions that you control. From what I can note, it seems to be spawning them around your legendary lord. They're never too far off, however this could just be a coincidence, but during this playthrough I had a total of 5 different armies spawn, and they all spawned close enough to Stormrider. Now, these invasion forces can be practically anything. As you can see on screen, I had a Skaven invasion force, but I've also had to deal with vampiric invasion forces, spotting some lizardmen forces, among others. Again, this could be quite coincidental, but it seems to be very region focused. For example, you will see a vampiric army spawn in a region that Stormrider's in that has high vampiric corruption. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned Cafean Silk. This is a resource that seems to be unique to you, and it is a faction-wide resource throughout all your owned provinces. Essentially, as you start taking over more and more provinces, or just starting to get a city into a new province, you may have the chance of spawning this event. This means that trade agreements themselves with other factions can be quite lucrative, you can end up getting quite a lot of money just from trade. The bigger your empire, the more resources you'll have and the more you'll be able to earn from someone else. After gaining control of the eastern shorelines, you'll notice that your supply lines now are radically changed. Where now all the negatives have been changed to minor buffs, this can be seen on screen right now. All these minor buffs together can present to be a quite powerful tool. But in harder difficulties, it more or less evens it out with you and the AI. As you can see, this is only at 69%. To get the full 100, the High Elves not only need to be in control of the coast of Lustria, but also make sure that Orf 1 is secure. And on screen right now are the bonuses once you have your supply line at 100%. Of course, it can be rather easy in easier difficulties to be able to get these bonuses, as stability does not just depend on you, it's more focused around the High Elf race as a whole. So as long as High Elf factions control the areas needed, you will get the benefits. This might be a bit different for you in harder difficulties, for example in Legendary, where Morafi seems to invade Ulf 1 quite often. Now on screen right now are the uniquely added units for this mod. As you can see, there's not really that much being added here. In truth, they're not really even basic units. They follow more the reinforcement mechanic that we've started to see being implemented than anything else. However, they're not overpowered reinforcements, and yes, they are reskins, but they look rather good for what they are. Now, I will be honest with you guys, there is also another different mechanic implemented in this mod, where you'll get bonuses if a character from another high elf faction walks over your territories that you control. However, it seems that despite this playthrough and my own personal one, the high elves just did not want to move. Teclas himself was an issue here, despite the fact that he was at war with practically every Lizardman faction, he would not leave his island and walk through my territory. And the same could be said about all the other elves in Ulf 1, once again not being cooperative whatsoever, but hey, it fits with the law. Then again, given your bonuses that you can get from just uniting the supply lines, you don't really need any extra bonuses from anything else, in all honesty. But the mod itself is rather interesting, it's a new take on Alariel's mechanic, and it doesn't force you to stay in Ulf 1. If anything, you can just let Tyrion confederate with everyone else, and you can focus your efforts in Lustria and the world beyond. My only real issue is the fact that the faction was in Lustria. Out of all the places, I know it makes the most sense to be placed in Lustria, but yeah, it's very overcrowded. 
That being said, it was nice to play the Hyos in a different way, and I do actually really recommend this, especially if you play harder difficulties and you want more of a challenge early on, this faction might be the one for you. Now, as usual, should you want to try out this faction, you can find the direct link in the description below. Bear in mind that this is an OVN Lost Factions mod, so you'll need to download all of the OVN series which can be found on the mod page itself. And you will need to use a faction unlocker if you want to play as this faction. And as always, if you know of any mods that you'd like to see highlighted on this channel, you can request it in the comments section below. Or might I suggest joining the official Great Book of Grudges Discord, where it's much easier to get in contact with me. But with that my friends we've come to the end of our video, thank you so much for watching, if you did enjoy the video, might I suggest giving the video a like, or even subscribing to the channel as it really does help us out. In the description section below are various links to different social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram and Discord. Also in the description section is an affiliate link with Element Games where you could buy loads of hobby based products, not just Warhammer, for 10 to 25% off. Making a purchase using that link and also our special code which is also in the description supports the channel at no extra cost to you, which we think is rather cool. A big thank you to our patrons, your support means the world to us, it's amazing that people want to help a small channel like us grow and get to a higher level of content. A big thank you to Gibraltar LUSC, Ryan Birch, Andrew Prince and Okro for subscribing to us at our fame level, you guys are super cool. And a big thank you to Edward Yule, VS Fasan, Aaron Whitman and Shaggy for subscribing to us at our king level, honestly we can't thank you all enough. And lastly, a big thank you to all of you for liking, sharing and commenting on these videos. Honestly, it's because of you guys that the channel has been growing at such a great pace lately, so we can't thank you all enough. But with that my friends, thank you so much for watching once again, and we shall see you all again very very soon. Have a good day.